Chapter 6 Getting Ready The following afternoon, Mandy, Grandma, Grandpa, and James were standing in the driveway of Lilac Cottage. Blackie was busy wrapping his leash around James's ankles. James had his eyes shut. Okay, you can open your eyes now, Mandy said to James. James opened his eyes and looked at the pile of things on the floor of the garage. Blackie pulled at his leash and sniffed at a can of black paint. Then he sneezed and shook himself. What's all this? said James. Guess, said Mandy. James looked puzzled. It looks like a heap of junk to me, he said. Mandy put her hands on her hips and looked at him. Well, James Hunter, she said, it might look like a pile of old junk to you now, but once you and Grandpa have finished with it, it's going to be the best go-kart in Walford. At least that's what Grandpa says. And she turned to look at her Grandpa. That's right, said Grandpa. James was standing there with his mouth open. A go-kart, he said. You mean we're going to make one? Mandy laughed. Not me. Grandpa's the expert, she said. But you're going to help, Grandpa said to James. James turned to him, his face shining. Oh, Mr. Hope, this is terrific. He looked at Mandy. Where did you get all this stuff? Oh, here and there, said Mandy. And I've got more news for you. Jack wants one of Laura's baby rabbits. No kidding, said James. How did you manage that? Grandma smiled. Come inside and get a cold drink, and Mandy can tell you all about it, she said. And then we'll drop the plans for the go-kart, Grandpa said. Oh, and Grandpa, said Mandy, could you please help Jack make a rabbit hutch? There's plenty of wood here. Jack's mom and dad are so busy with all the work at Hobart's Corner, they won't have time. Grandpa pushed back his hat and scratched his head. And I thought I was supposed to be retired, he said. He looked at James. Come on, boy, he said. Let's have our break before the whole of Welford starts lining up for carpentry work. James looked at Blackie. But what about Blackie, he said. We were going to have a training session this afternoon. Mandy took Blackie's leash. Just leave Blackie to us, she said. Grandma and I are going to train him. James laughed. Do you hear that, Blackie, he said. You'd better be on your best behavior. Blackie looked up at him and put his head to one side. And don't try looking pathetic, Grandma said to the little animal. It's all for your own good. Blackie lay down, put his head on his paws, and sighed. Grandma shook her head. That puppy might not be the most obedient dog in the world, she said, but I swear he understands every word you say to him. Biscuit, Mandy said to Blackie. The puppy was up on his feet at once, trotting beside her, tail wagging. Looks as if you're right, Grandma, she said. Now all we've got to do is try and get him to do things he doesn't want to do. Grandpa and James spent the next week working on the go-kart. James couldn't talk about anything else. Your grandpa taught me how to use a saw, he said proudly on the way to school one morning, and he showed me how to cut dovetail joints. What are they? Mandy asked. James tried to explain, but Mandy couldn't follow him. Come and see, said James. It's looking really great. So that evening, Mandy went to Lilac Cottage with James. Wow, she said when grandpa wheeled the go-kart out of the garage. That looks great. Are those really my old carriage wheels? Grandpa smiled. They look a bit different now, don't they? He said. You can say that again, said Mandy, staring at the long wooden structure perched on its wheels. James ran his hand over the smooth wood of the go-kart. Those are dovetail joints, he said, pointing to the deep box seat at the back of the go-kart. Mandy looked really closely. The side of the seat was joined to the back almost like a jigsaw. Now we have to attach a footboard and guide rope to the front, said James. A what? said Mandy. It's a bit like a steering wheel, said Grandpa, or a tiller on a boat. Oh, right, said Mandy. She grinned. Tell you what, she said. I think this is going to knock spots off Andrew's go-kart. You bet, said James. Grandpa looked at him. Ready, he said. We've still got a long way to go if this is going to be the best go-kart in Welford. James picked up a hammer and a handful of nails. You bet, he said, laughing. After that, Mandy went to Lilac Cottage every evening. She was soon involved in helping with the go-kart and Jack's rabbit hutch. 
The rabbit hutch was coming along, but a little slower than the go-kart. Grandpa had built a sturdy frame on legs. It stood about a foot off the ground. Grandpa was letting Jack do as much as he could, and Mandy could see the Jack that Jack was loving it. Each evening after dinner, he raced straight to Lilac Cottage to work on the cage. Jack liked carpentry as much as James did, but Grandpa liked someone to keep a close eye on him, so Mandy soon got into the habit of working with Jack. With Grandpa's help, they had glued and nailed the sides of the rabbit cage together. Then they fitted the partition between the two car- compartments inside the cage and finally got ready to attach the roof to the sides. The roof has to overhang the cage, Grandpa said. You don't want the rain to get in, or cats either. Would cats hurt a rabbit? Jack asked. Grandpa took a roll of chicken wire and measured a length off it against the front of the hutch. A cat would kill a baby rabbit, he said. Then he looked at Jack's concerned face. But we're going to make sure your hutch is cat-proof.